what do we put our faith in? Let's see. God. In God, yeah. That's really what being a Christian is all about. Having our faith, our belief, our trust should be in God. But other people put their trust in all kinds of strange things. Superstitions, they put their belief in things like uh, luck, or, or they trust all kinds of things that aren't really worth trusting in. And what Jesus shows us in this story is the importance of trusting in him and not anything else. So on one occasion, he goes up to Jerusalem. The Bible says this comes from John chapter 5. He goes up to Jerusalem and he goes to a pool. But at the pool, lots of people who had illnesses and diseases were laid uh, all around the pool. And they did it because of a superstition. Now, a superstition is putting your trust in something that you believe is going to happen. But actually, it doesn't. So all kinds of people were there, and this one particular man had been there for 38 years. That's a long time. Now the Bible doesn't say exactly what he had wrong with him, it just says that he was an invalid. Now it probably means he couldn't use his legs, it might have meant he couldn't have used his arms either. And the superstition was this, that every now and then the pool would bubble up. Okay, So bubbles would come. There probably was a very normal reason why the bubbles came, but the people thought it was something special or magical or supernatural. And they thought it was a sign from God that one of his angels was stirring the pool and that the first person who got into the pool when the water bubbled up would be healed of whatever illness or disease or injury they had. But doesn't it sound a bit strange to you that... God would make people who were disabled race to be the first one into the pool. <laughs> Doesn't that sound a bit strange? I mean, if they've got a problem where they can't use their legs, it seems very harsh to say to them, right, the first one in is the winner. The first one in gets healed because the poor people can't get in there. And so all these people are waiting for somebody to help them into the pool when the bubbles come. Now, the bubbles haven't come on this time and... and it's probable that the bubbles were just caused by like a pipe coming in and maybe hot water was coming in and being pumped in like, like it would be in a swimming pool or a jacuzzi or a hot tub, okay? So Jesus comes along and he comes up to this man. And Jesus looks to the man and he knows why he sat there and he says to him, he says, do you want to get well? Do you want to be healed? What do you think he says? Um, yes, I really want. He does want to be healed, but what do you think he wants Jesus to do for him? Lift him into the pool. Lift him into the pool. <laughs> this is what he's expecting Jesus to do. He's expecting Jesus, and he's hoping the best he can hope from Jesus, he thinks, is that Jesus might now push him when the water bubbles up into the pool. Do you think that's the sort of thing Jesus does? It's not, is it? It's a funny picture, isn't it? Can you imagine Jesus just pushing this poor invalid man, this poor disabled man? Now, if it was true that the Lord was bubbling up the water to save the first person who got in, it would make sense that Jesus would say, OK, here I am, I'm going to help you into the water as soon as the water bubbles up. But he doesn't do that, does he? He says, it's as if he's saying, look, let's, let's not... The healing isn't in the water. The healing isn't in the bubbles. The healing is in the person of Jesus Christ. I see at one time you and I were driving and uh, you looked up and you saw a star and you wished upon it and you said I've just made a wish and I said well I don't think that was a wishing star. A wishing star has to be one of those that flies across the sky. Now I don't even believe in wishing stars but I know you were thinking about it and you were sad and you said well what, when can I see a wishing star and I said you don't need to see a wishing star if you want something badly enough we have an almighty God who you can pray to, and he will answer your prayers. And you said to me, can I pray right away now? I said, yes, of course you can. And do you know what your prayer was? You said, dear Lord, please help me to see a wishing star. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh dear, I don't think you've quite got this yet. The whole point was you didn't need the wishing star. You could have just asked God to, to answer your prayer. And this man didn't need the water. He thought, the best I can get from Jesus is that Jesus can push me in the water. But Jesus is saying, forget that. I'm here to heal you. And he says to him, he says, I tell you what, just stand up. If you want to be healed, stand up 
and pick up your mat and go home. What does the man do? Yeah, he does. He doesn't wait anymore for this silly superstition. And the man does exactly what Jesus says. He doesn't have to wait for the bubbles to come. Instead, he just picks up his mat and he's healed completely after 38 years. 38 years should tell us something, shouldn't it? It should say to us that this man had been there 38 years and his trust in Nepal clearly wasn't working for him, was it? But the minute he met Jesus, the first time Jesus said to him, be healed, he stood up and he was completely fit and, and well again. You know, God is saying to us throughout the whole Bible, not just in the New Testament, don't trust in false idols, don't trust in luck, don't trust in rabbit's feet or not walking under ladders or black cats. Don't trust in that stuff. Don't trust in going to special places for healing. The only place, the only person where faith and healing and salvation can be found is in Jesus.